Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruhu wa natubu ilayhi wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa sayyiati a'malina. Salat name the merciful benefactor the merciful redeemer. All the praise belongs to Allah. We praise him. We seek his help. We seek his guidance. We ask his forgiveness. And we repent only to him. We seek refuge from all of our consequences of all of our errors and bad deeds. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ahdu la sharika lahu. Wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. I witness that there is no deity except Allah. He is one and alone. He is without any partners. And I bear witness that indeed from Muhammad to whom the Quran was revealed is his servant and his messenger. May the greetings of peace be upon the most excellent messenger, unlettered prophet, upon his family and descendants, upon his companions, upon the righteous of Amin. I focus for the khutbah, hopefully brief khutbah. Is really based on a, a phrase that one of my teachers, my main teacher, Islam gave. And it's just a simple phrase. And the phrase is, is in definition, there is direction. In definition, there is direction. You may be familiar with this phrase. So that's the focus. And I came upon to this concept of this perspective actually contemplating what the term Muslim means, what the term believer means. Something that should never be taken for granted. And if you see yourself as a student, you always want more understanding. You want to understand the term better. And I know we all know what a Muslim is, and a non-Muslim will tell you what a Muslim is, right? Everyone in the, today in this day and time can give you a definition or at least give some kind of description, maybe in there what they know a Muslim to be or believe it to be. But for us who are followers of Prophet Muhammad, prayers and peace be upon him, who identify with the Quran, we identify with sources for these terms, then we should uh, strive to really have a grasp of it, contextual meaning, not dictionary meaning. The contextual meaning, where, what is the context? What is the text? Quran is the text. So I found myself going there looking for a definition or a fresh definition or from broader universal maybe definition of the term Muslim or the term believer. So I begin with a, a verse of the Quran that begins, I will be the Bismillah Ya ayyuhal nasu, uzkuru ni'amat Allahi alaykum, hal min khaliqin gayru laha, gayru lahi yarjukukum, yarjukukum min samai wa ardi, la ilaha illa huwa, fa'ana, fa'ana tu'thakun. Surah Allah al-Nim, the last name, the merciful benefactor, merciful redeem, the translation of Abdullah Yusuf, Abdullah Yusuf Ali, O mankind, Call to mind the grace of Allah unto you. Is there a creator other than Allah to give you sustenance from heaven or earth? There is no God but he. How then are you deluded away from the truth? One of the terms in this verse that stood out uh, and as it begins, Ya Ayyuhan Nafsu Utkuru, the translator is called to mind or reflect. This is the word also used in the verse where we're called to come to uh, Salat al Juma. And it's, it has to say, Fesal, rush, rush or come enthusiastic to what? It says, Vikr, same word, to the members of Allah, as uh, commonly translated. But I think there's another uh, understanding to have that we're going to get in this verse when Allah says a call to mind the grace of God. 
is there a creator? So right away, there is a question. This is the teaching process. That's why this text is a context in which we will know what these terms mean, what Muslim mean, what believe me. We can't take it out of this text. We can't get it from a dictionary. We only gonna get a little surface shell meaning of it. But it says, is there grace of God unto you? There is there, it's a question, the grace of God unto you, is there a creator other than God? Now I'm drawing on another part of my learning for, for, for stability, right? Now I'm going away from the obvious and my mind is opening up some, some tools of the men of the mind is now being are called on to give me this definition or to help me guide me towards what it is the objectives of this uh, message here in the Quran. So Allah says, what, from the heaven and the earth, Allah feeds us, right, from the heavens, we're fed from the heavens and the earth. Now my whole circumstance, if I'm living in a small tribal situation, right, now I'm being drawn to some sources that I may have not even thought about before. So in definition, there is a direction. If we have the definition of these terms, then we will know what the direction is for that, for that term and how it should be applied and what kind of context it is to be complied. Right? So is this a deductive meaning that's coming to us from the Quran through dhikr, through this, re through this reflection, through reflecting, through this thinking? What does Allah say in the Quran? Fadakir, another verse, phrase, Fadakir, in Nefa'at ad Think, because thinking benefits. Thinking is productive. I think for surely I live. I think for surely I perceive. This is how human beings over, over history, history of human beings is, has seen that once he becomes into this rational creature, he evolved to a rational creature, his whole life circumstances change. But what's, and also what stands out in that, in that frame is that he has this more intense and more involved relationship with the creation. So revelation of Quran benefited the whole world. How? It killed superstition. It took man out of his superstition, which we shouldn't maybe condemn so much because wombs have darkness in them, right? Something can form in that womb of darkness, superstition, that would help us when we get into the light. So Allah says it's revealed in this Quran, three things in this verse, right? That the grace of God unto you comparison. Is there another creator? If we don't see a sign of another creator, more than likely there is no other creator. It was been introduced other than God Allah. Then it says the sustenance. So it's our sustenance through which we are identifying with God is. I think this is a very important point of a Muslim or believing. We're believing in this source. Unequated, unequated source. It's starting to shape my belief. That's what my belief is. It's not just belief in a theory or a theorem, is it? It's a belief in some real experience or something observable. So Allah says, give you something from heaven. He asks you to think about it. Is there another source? Are you getting these blessings? Are you getting this sustenance from any other place? It's a rational conclusion. There is no God, but he said, how then are you deluded away from the truth? There must be another source interfering. And I know who it is. It's me. I'm the one interfering. This is a biblical verse. It said, He who has set in darkness, they who have set in darkness, have seen a great light. It's a universal truth that's being continuated. It's continuated. Continue. So, in definition, there is direction. So, there's some deductive reasoning that must be implied. And that's how the believer will think. We will know the believer by their thinking. And that's what defines the believer because he's involved in some deductive reasoning. Ibrahim stands out. Abraham stands out. That was all deductive reasoning. You better what is a deductive reasoning? It's when you use general ideas or premise to come to a specific conclusion. Simple definition. Clearly, Abraham, I'll call Abraham I'll call him in the future. Right? Says, no, it's not to start. The deducted it couldn't not to start because they stepped. The moon said, no, son, you all, we all know them very well. It's good that there are these stories that they told me for us throughout the generation. 
the sun, he saw the sun, he said, deducting, he deducted it, no, it. What was his conclusion? This is where it may take some formulation of some careful thinking and observing of what it is you're seeing, what he was seeing, how to describe what he saw to, come, to, to bring him to this conclusion from these general ideas. That these things set, they have limited realities, right? They come and they go. They have no, they produce nothing really other than what they are obvious to the light, say, of course. But they come and go. They have no control over their timing, over their existence. This is part of his deductive reasoning that there must be something behind it that first has set the time for it set the shape for it, set the functions for it. There's something behind. He may be dispelled out of the language. No, a lot of not going to give us a book with all the detailed formula. You'll be able to write those. That's why he picked one from among us. He picked a being from among us to show us the problem and show how simple it is because it's a simple reality, but it's a contextual reality. It's a contextual definition of God by view of his creation. It's being in his creation is the context for us to really know our law. And Allah said in the Quran, if the earth had been populated by angels, he would have sent angel as a messenger. So the plus so Abdul Yusuf Ali points something out very important for us to take with us about this verse that he translated, and that I'm sure he really, really wants people to read his footnotes. Because he knows he cannot express everything that is in the verse of the Quran. There must be some reflection. So his his point first one he pointed out was that Allah is the center of all life, but also all activity. There was an activity in Abraham's perception, because uh, what he perceived in his experiment. The second point he points out from this verse is indication is that sustenance has to be defined from the time. It's not just the food and the drink, the warmth, the sun, the water. But all sustenance for the human life, all sustenance we will conclude then, we should not cut it short, right? We should see the full, the highest life that exists, that is also the sustenance of our life. I'm talking about the intellectual achievements of human beings. These are products from Allah's sustenance. So there's a context for seeing this that Allah, but he says the point was the verses point out of that. A lot of the center of the creation that they were that, that being pointed out, but also the center of our activity. He's the center of our life. This is what all religion is calling people to live. People to see Allah in they see God actively involved in their life from birth to death, in every aspect of life. And the Quran, I think, is very unique because this will be diving that insight into the religious insight. It's clarifying what the previous scriptures. Sustenance is all that help to maintain and develop every aspect of our life, physical, spiritual, moral, intellectual, and human. So I close this first part of the khutbah. Allah says, O mankind, it is you that have need of Allah. But Allah is the one free of all wants, worthy of all things. If he so pleased, he could blot you out and bring in a new creation. <laughs> to the reader or the leader, uh, listener, the first time reader, it may sound kind of harsh, but really, it's given us the definition. It's defined clearly. To make no mistake. Not to uh, not to overestimate, underestimate the creator. To not think that his his power that his force his power is limited, or that we can influence. These are the superstitions that they weave, but superstitions about them uh, attribute strange things to them, right? attribute all kinds of superstitions to them. But this is a very healthy. When you think about a very healthy verse. It defines, first of all, our brand of faith. It's constituted on, on the absolute power of God. 
not a conditional power. And that must be clear, especially for the rational freedom that we have. So it really is good that it checks our reasoning with faith, with faith. It checks our reason faith, rational faith, by letting us know there are lines, there are limitations. Allah is not dependent on anything in the creation. If he said he could block you out and bring in a whole new creation. Now, if that doesn't scare us, it should prepare us for really, really good progress. If we're not reacting emotionally, we react to the fact that we got it. If, we, if we're in line with this God, we should be covered. Nothing's going to intrude. Nothing's going to sneak in. So in this verse, Allah says that the brand of absolute unconditional belief. So if we believe, that's what we believe in. That then is unconditional. That's the quality of the belief. That's the quality of the belief. It's the, the quality of his faith, the quality of his belief. And his belief that God is at the center of all activity. Body. And that my faith must be, uh, is in something that is unconditional and absolute. Now I can think about my own self. I can have a self, a correct self evaluation. So now I'm in the right position in relationship to that that has all power. So the terms of belief and believer are defined. And there is, on this note to close, believer will appear in the Quran both as a verb and as a noun for the average student. When it appears as a verb, it says one who is believing. Or one who is practicing belief. When it appears as a noun, definite article, the movement, he's attained the level where he can carry the belief, where he earns the labor. Beautiful labor. Both are good, but the objective is to become the believer, not just to believe, but to become a believer. Of course, believing will help us attain on the fact. على رسول الله ابن وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين اما بعد I believe there's a definition of Muslim and believer that is yet to be embraced by the global ummah let's say the global Muslim community the global ummah there's a broader application for it globally. And I think that there's no argument that that is the role of the Muslim Ummah. I think that's specifically spelled out clearly in the Quran from the creation of an Adam, right? There's a caliph in there, and as a community brought out for the good of all people. So if we, and there are scholars now that have forced to, that are forced to question. Are we fulfilling the role? There must be some disconnect somewhere. But if we had that unity that the Quran is pointing us to, that has been assigned, then we have to question the effectiveness in achieving it. The Prophet Sallallahu he said, I don't have the Hadith in front, but he said, in the, the room, the paradise, the levels up in paradise, he said there will be these the merchants, the honest and just merchants, the business people, the business people, successful business people, maybe. That sometimes we get too jealous about. <laughs> really, it's not righteous to be jealous of a person who's rich. That's not righteous. Allah makes that very clear. Yeah, Allah says He is best able to protect both the poor and the rich. So you ain't gonna get nowhere cussing him out. <clears throat> the prophet said these merchants, these successful merchants, will be in a room next to the prophets. Let's think about that for a while. Especially if we had a religious orientation, you know, that was really 
paradise was just for angels. For the early religions that it was in, they occupied, they were the residents of paradise. But the prophet says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that the just merchants will be in a room next to the prophet. Their value, which goes back to us to redefining and finding that Quranic context of what we look at, what we look at, Quranic context, the loss. Because otherwise, we'd have no problem. Of course, the merchants are going to be in the court. That's part of the diagram. That's part of, part of the venue, of the, part of the design. That all humanity would be successful. Then when we call people to falah, we mean falah. It's cultivation of every aspect of the human body, the human being, right? He's got intellectual aspirations. That should be fulfilled. He likes nice things. <laughs> Allah owns all the all the resources. So if what, what and that's why Allah says for the poor person that goes into stealing, they're saying that God is stealing from them. They're saying that God is depriving them. The prophet said, No, go out there and cut some trees when the man came to him and bring the wood back. He was looking for handouts. So I was gonna go get there, go borrow an axe, right? chop some trees. All those people down there need some wood for their fire. And he became so successful that he was able to give charity. So the merchant should be in a room next to the prophet, to the prophet. So the prophet brought the message, and the merchants were living the message. So let me conclude with the, I found this very just. So it's in the Quran, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed. So why of what the, uh, what the Mecca was saying about the prophet, right? The prophet saw was getting the first revelation. They didn't take him seriously. I think we all know accurate the fame of the history, right? They didn't take him very serious. They thought it was just poetry. They laughed, right? They made mockery, right? But when people started listening and the numbers started growing, I bet this is when this day when they say, why not? Why not? Why has not this Quran been sent down to some great man of the true time? What is that saying? Now that we see this power in this world and we see people coming, they say we, we should have been given this place, right? The true town. Mecca, what was the other one? Hype. Aristocratic, right? The aristocracy. Remember they turned it back on the Bible when he asked them. But I'm saying, look today at these affluent societies, right? They, they're not interested in the revelation. So the prophet had was dealing with this class and this tribalism. Revelation. We come to address this, this arrogance from the material arrogance that was being uh, uh, expressed in their reaction to, to the Quran, the new message. But the point should be is that this is what the Quran came to do. It came to eliminate the separatism among or based on material, material substance, material affluence. It came to level the playing field and to give everyone their quality and their earn, their due that they earn. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad, kema salli ta ala Ibrahim wa ala Ibrahim, wa barik ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad, kema barak wa ala Ibrahim wa ala Ibrahim, fir ala 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 